So in no order of priority, we'll start playing with some video. Actually put Duran in a bit of trouble. It's an under 17 game. As Duran gets hit late, it'll be look at, look at who's US. playing and look at the time. Yeah, it's definitely getting chippy here now as Orozco comes over to so make sure everything's okay. So here we've got Brazilian's probably got some components of mass confrontation. And yes, when Brian and I came up with the triangle, that looks good on a whiteboard. But in reality, it's a bunch of shit. It's so just a bit of pushing and um, there the idea is that you don't get in too close and you can't see stuff. Right? That's the holy concept of that. But when we get all of this pushing and shoving, here's a peacemaker. The guy's still down. The trainer's been called. And the ref is doing whatever he's doing. Now, at issue is that, let's watch the challenge. You see Durant just, coming over, and then, yeah, Mateus comes in there. Wow. What, what's the visual down. that gets the ooh? We got an ooh when we looked at it the second yeah, time. What, what was it? Had no idea. The lunge. The he leaves his feet with the lunge. That's got to flip your switch. And the lunge, leave your feet with a stud exposed, tackle. is at least Player a potential nasty. Out. Right? Can't be a nothing. And what do we got here? Hard to see, right? Those are hard to see. There, that's another one where if you're in too close. But, you know, and again, what did this mean in this game in the 85th minute? You see the player looking up? Oh, yeah, I'll take the yellow. Right? That's a professional foul in the 85th minute when they're already embarrassed and he's getting some payback or whatever. So here's a question is, what did the ref get for that yellow card? Not much. And, you know, potentially then is there a time when you consider that red? I get it. That what's the nature of the challenge? Here's a question for you, again, with the visual. Can you have a player leading with a stud on the ground and it not be a yellow? Answer, yes. Can he get the ball? Answer, yes. When does it become something that ticks you off? I don't know when it's more than that. <laughs> and... That, those are words that you've got to get that visual discrimination into your comfort zone. But the ooh and the ability to see that on the first go around is the skill set. Did the ref see it? Hell, he went right in with the yellow. Watch. Here's another biggie. This is a different with your skill set. Go back to your grade 8 course. The grade 8 course typically will teach us foul identification. Whistle, 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 whistle. What do you hear from the bench? Let us play, ref. Okay. I'm going to let you play. Okay. Boom. Hey, ref, you better call something. Somebody's going to get hurt. Those two parameters can tell you something. Do you have coaches that you respect more than others? When you hear that from a respected coach, heads up. The game is getting a little bit tight. Maybe you shorten the interval with your whistles. It's midfield. Who cares? Yeah? Right? So, so that issue of the timing of whistles is a factor. Let's go to the second one. Well, number one. In the air from Heitinger's header. Chavi's underneath it. Chavi Alonso going in. Broken. Remember this? And, uh, so, Howard Webb here. nice body language, nice composure. A potential for How many of you think he gets the wrong card? How many of you think gets, he, he gets the wrong card? Oh, come on, man. It's the World Cup final. It's the World Cup final. You can't screw the game up like that. It's the World Cup final. You can't do that. All right? That's the problem. Good. So what is about this? What is about the nature of this challenge that makes it non-negotiable? Just let it work. You're all right. That doesn't belong in the game. Right? I can show you that same type of foul. I can show you that same type of foul in a women's game in Atlanta a few years ago with one of our FIFA guys on it, the, the Chinese player that went to the hospital with the stud marks in her throat. Right? And the ref given a yellow card. It's like, well, she was short. I was like, no.
What's, well, you guys do your under 14. Let's go back to the under 14s. Some of those kids are this big, and some of those kids are this big. Who gets screwed? The big guy. You, I mean, you, it does. We don't, you know, because he makes a, he makes a type, and he's up into the guy's crotch or whatever, right? I mean, so the nature of the challenge is, is sort of negotiable there. Let's look at the third one. So this is one where it would be beneficial for us, but there's a couple of issues here. We'll watch. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so where are we? Is that a foul for you? So is it from behind? Is it enough? If you tell the kid to get into the gym and bulk up. <laughs> what's, we got coaches in here? Do you t what's the difference between a fair shoulder charge and one that's not, that you blow your whistle for? It flips your switch, whatever that is. It's too much. So the question is, is that from behind and enough of an oop that puts the guy down at speed we could get, give me a field diagram and let's start diagramming vectors and we can do all of our stuff with the, the four Ds and all that other, I mean, I'm sorry, all that other stuff that, that, and I don't mean that negatively, I mean all that stuff that is just a way for us to figure out is that a denying goal scoring opportunity, which is a tactical implication, not whether or not it's a foul. But typically denying goal scoring opportunity fouls are not nasty fouls. They're going to be that type of nudge or little hold. It's not a whack. It's not a scissors or a stud in from behind. Um, what, what you want to see with that is where did the foul take place? And what's the restart? And how is the free kick managed? And how should we be critiquing that official? Because here's a, here's a clinically, the referee has control of the spot of the foul. And the restart, it's not, I mean, it is ceremonial, it's not quick. He, in fact, endorses, how far is the guy on the, on the restart? And I'm telling you, he plays the ball. The, the, wall, the guy in the wall plays the ball. After the ref has come over, involved himself in the play, said it was okay to be, how far is that? Five, I would say five, six max, right? And does that impact, let's talk geometry. Does it impact the fact that they're closer to the goal? and it's not in the same spot. A lot of times with the gamesmanship, typically you get the teams that will try and cheat and move the ball, right, versus whatever. So what are the referee's options on this free kick? Say it again? Well, he, he, he set the play, and, 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 I'll, and I'll make it a little bit harder. And the, where he set the wall, they didn't encroach. They didn't move forward. I'll use one of our referee speak words. So now you've screwed yourself because you've, this is against the law, right? If, in fact, the referee had set an honest 10 and those players had come up to that six-yard spot and played the ball, what are your options? Retake? Caution? Now, let's still go in. Caution. There's another option, which much of you take. Ignore it. And when you ignore it, you set the tone for the rest of the game. So what's the most important free kick in your match? The first one in each red zone. Do you use the term red zone? Red, red zone is the area from which a team may score directly on a restart. So for 14-year-olds, how far is that? 40 yards, 30 yards. That kid can get a good instep. If he gets down his knee over the ball, he can get a shot on the target, et cetera, et cetera. So when you take control of that restart in the red zone early on, you're setting the tone for both ends of the field. And the concept is to do it efficiently. You take control. Why? Because it's in my red zone. I'm not going to let you have a quick one. Hey, man, hold up. Toot, toot. Yeah, put it down there. And whatever you do, whether you go backwards, whether you go be the first brick, 
uh, you know, this way. It's different ways how you want to do that. You ever break the law? Um, so I'm back doing 12-year-olds. I like kids. And, and I'm back doing 12-year-olds. And where we live, it was the two stud teams that were whatever at this tournament. And it's early in the game. And I've got a restart that's 10 yards outside the penalty area over in front of the defensive team side of the field. <clears throat> and I call the foul. That's not, that's not the complaint. And I'm sort of standing in the midfield. And I'm saying, Johnny, I need you back on the area of the line. And, and that's about 10. That'll be good. And the coach is yelling, Johnny, go up and stand in front of the ball and make him pace it off. <laughs> and I'm saying, coach, you don't want me to pace it off. And Johnny's like, what the hell do you want me to do? Man? <laughs> so I do it, toot toot. And I go over to the ball. It's like, I put him back about the edge of the six. <laughs> and the coach is going nuts. Ref, what are you doing? I said, coach, I told you you didn't want me to pace it off. And Johnny said, I ain't doing what the coach tells me no more in this game. <laughs> and a little bit later, I'm over on the other side. I'm waiting for the throw in. And the mommies are there in the stands. They say, hey, ref, yes, ma'am. Bet he doesn't ask you to pace it off anymore. I said, Jesus. <laughs> What did you think? Do you like that? I said, we don't get you old guys, man. You, you, you don't take the from He intimidates the young kids all over the place. So when you guys take up the badge, we don't have too many young pups here, but I heard the bit, as you need to, that you're the mentors for all the kids that are looking at you, that you've gone to this referee academy, and they're paying attention to what you do. And they're emulating what you do. And part of the problem is they emulate what they see refs do on TV, where they allow too much of errors of omission. So you guys are the beacons. Go out there and light that light the right way. Yeah? Set that wall properly, professionally. What I'm doing is, would I do that in a pro game? No. Do I do that? I've done that in college games. I've done that in youth games. But pick your space yeah, to do that. Be careful. OK, let's go to another one. But look at where they take it versus the foul was out here. Huge. Huge. OK, go ahead. Is Yader, Yader apology. This is a Yader play. <clears throat> so let's watch this. This is off of what was the restart? <coughs> was it? Restart was what? Goal kick. Restart was a goal kick. And if we were listening to the audio, we'd be listening to the TV guys saying that the refs missed the offside, and we'd be laughing, right? But this is where the ref is caught up in the 6 o'clock position, running hell. He's running at speed. And you get a play on his far side. I don't know if he went to the angle here. How do you get this one unscrewed? By the way, this is a clean tackle. The ref gives a red card in the PK and, and gets an issue. And, and the decision was, the school book solution was, this is a clean tackle where the defender comes from behind, gets the ball, ball goes up, hits the attacker, hits his arm, and goes out of play for a goal kick. Correct call should have been a goal kick. The ref is coming up from, the, from whatever the 6 o'clock position, gives a red card. I don't know what they're doing with their gizmos. Conceptually, you could have had the AR go. What do you got? Hey, man, I don't know what you got, but I got a good tackle. Are you sure? Yeah. You better, be, you better be sure. Yeah. OK, whatever. And whatever you do in that instant, right, that might have saved this. As it turns out, they give the red, and this is an ah moment, and this ends up in the whatevers. So here's an example of cleared ball from a goal kick, a couple of bounces, and you're in deep. And getting that angle on view and or teamwork, which is always going to be a biggie. Positioning. Work rate, teamwork, biggies. Go ahead, next one. You got to read body language, right? What time of the game is it? Early on. So already something's flipped the switch between those two players, right? 
And not to mention, there was a pretty nasty foul over in a tactical area in front of the benches that stopped play. So he blows his whistle, goes over and does that, has a good read on the players dissipating. It looks like it, that goes to bed. And then he says, hold up, I'm going to go take care of business over here. The, the, the message that he's sending is okay, but you can do that quicker. All that does is a toot, you go to the whistle, you stop, you turn over, hey, you two guys, bah, bah, bah. hey, come on guys, whatever, it's done. That gesture has done the same thing rather than prolonging that. So play again with messages sent, intended versus received. Should the ref, as you did, make notice that one player's ready to do a thump and the other one says, I mean, so that may be something to pay attention to, right? So here's where we use the dead ball to send that message in a short period of time. Refereeing is not just whistles and cards. This is game management, right, without having to waste that. Uh, think of another one. Um, you got that identified speedy player going down the wing, thereabouts in midfield. And you know he's the speedy player. And the Rottweiler is on him. And the speedy player nutmegs him. Do you use that term? Yeah. And he nutmegs him. And, and the central defender comes over and clears the ball upfield. What do you do? If you turn and run upfield, you've missed a chance to referee. Why? Because the Rottweiler will look at you before he smacks him. Right? And if, and if he looks at you and you're looking back at him going, <laughs> he'll go, I. Did I get a ref today? <laughs> and now you can go upfield. Yeah? So reading those situations early on and sending those kinds of subtle messages is advanced refereeing. Let's go to the next one. Are we okay on time? Beltran. Beltran knocked down by Renteria Leg whistle, but there it is. Hey, hey. <clears throat> so here's the big guy. Usually they're gonna come and say. And he's going to take the speedy guy down in the flat and, you know, tell him to bulk up. I'm a big guy. Take a look at the foul here. This is the second time Renteria has gotten into Beltran. And there he is from behind. Is that enough from behind? You guys use the clock position. So that's from the 4 o'clock position into this area that's going to put him down at speed. Does the guy go down easy? Eh. You're going to give a PK for that? Now we'd have some people saying no. But over on the flat like that, you're going to give a free kick? Yeah, maybe. And you send the message. The question then is, I think there was more of it, is that it turns into a persistent infringement. And so that guy keeps playing. That's OK. We're, we're, we did the persistent infringement. That's good. Let's go to the next one. Oh, we got separate ones. Now, now a little bit more. Why a little bit more with the ooh? Because the ball's not there. It's late enough. It's on a planted foot. Right? And it comes through with that sweep that potentially could do more damage. So those are the kind of visuals that you've got to be able to discriminate. All tackles are not the same. Particularly on planted feet. Straight legs. Go ahead. That might be one where we say it's okay. Here's the challenge forward. Yeah, here's the challenge forward with a whistle, with blood. And I remember showing that one time and they said the kid was taking a dive. Uh, that is not a splash. All right? So the nature of the challenge at midfield, the nature of the air ball challenge at midfield, with the force vector coming from behind, with the forearm leading, that results in, is that a concussion? I don't know, because I'm not going to make that diagnosis, but I'm sure as hell going to call the trainer. Why? Because he's dazed, because he's got blood, and he goes down, and it's midfield, and it's easy. Whistle, trainer, now go deal with this guy. And you go deal with the perpetrator, and I didn't say which one was right. Go talk to him, go do different body language, go give him a card, whatever it is that you're going to do that fits your yardstick that's proportional. It's not a nothing. Yeah, that's a fair play. Not today. Why? Because I get a free kick here. 
hey, I'm being, whatever. And, and you've got to do your stuff. Why? Because you're going to take 30 seconds easy to get that guy off the field longer. So you've got that time to manage to where you manage your body language and what you say to the guy is big. Go ahead. Is Alex here? Okay. This is a developmental academy game, youth game, and that issue is stuff's going to happen here off of a restart. In fact, I think they give a red card, and an issue is they get the wrong kid. Okay? So the point with this is it was a contact to the head. Call the trainer. Right? Where's the ref? That's another one. Good. Sort things out. Maybe you need to talk with your buddy. Get your teamwork involved, but get it right before you start showing red cards to wrong players. That's, a, that's an all oops that you can avoid. You control that. Um, have you ever had a situation, uh, they get this right, and so now you get into a situation where the kid might say something, and now you correct it and say, yeah, but you're sent off anyway because you said the magic word. Well, you provoked it. But you give the guy a little bit more wiggle room. Um, this is a true story. What do you do with this one? So I've got an adult semifinal on a Wednesday night in the blowing snow. You guys don't have those games here. Um, ethnic league, it's back a few years ago. And in the first half, I've got a righteous send off in the first half. Um, and I don't want to say that I'm looking to make stuff up, but give me something. Give me some wiggle room. And the ability to judge that I got enough there that that crosses the line and the game was of that nature. So play's going on over here, and I hear a commotion, and I look over, and my AR has got one of these. I blow the whistle. Hey, you guys, relax. Relax. And I go running over. I said, what do you got? And he said, he spit on him. I said, great. I said, who? The kid went blank. <laughs> what do you do? Good. Drop ball. My game? I turn around. That's it, man. You're out of here. I hate spitters. And the guy turned and walked away. <laughs> Am I taking a chance? I got the oh, So wait a minute. So what do you do if he doesn't? You go up to the captain and you say, you know who he is. I don't, but I'm sending your ass if you don't tell me who. I would have made that up. But that, team, that, that game was going to finish even high, I can tell you that. And it worked. So, haha, be careful, I'm telling you not to do things. But there's times when you've got to be creative with your confidence level. Yeah? Um, here, this is an example. Give me, um, this was something that we did the other day. The kid had a good game, and uh, i got to put this more into instruction. When, what, what would be, for assessors, you know, they don't like it if you break the law. And, and I'll, I'll lead you to this, because if I, if I open ended and say, give me an example where referees are breaking the law. They're not following law. Um, I'll give you, the situation is it's a throw-in. And the throw-in is to be taken right at the junction at the halfway line and the touch line. Right? And the guy is 10 yards upfield. What are your options? By law. Blow the whistle. What? Blow the whistle, call him back. When? Before the ball is put in play. If it's after the ball that's put in play, and many officials are blowing the whistle and giving them a do-over, I suggest to you that's wrong. Because you have law that says what? Turn it over. Which doesn't, get ha doesn't happen often. Which if you follow law, you're still going to get but the trick is, and again, when we first started that, it was, toot, toot, look at me, man. I'll, I'll point to you every time where I want you. Or you do the, what better place to do the turnover than at the halfway line, right, if you want to send that message. The guy takes it from 15 yards up the field, toot, toot, no, bring it over here. Man, it's going the other way. What are you talking about? Hey, man, you know, it's over here. Well, you didn't tell me. Well, look to me. Next time I'll tell you. <laughs> and now I'm following law, right? But be careful that you're not that you're not giving them do-overs. It doesn't exist in the game. Let's go. I like this one. What do you got on the goalkeeper? Anything? A 
Under what circumstances do you have that delayed whistle? Can you give them the delayed whistle, give them the shot on goal, and give the PK? I love those. Maybe. Does the goalkeeper follow if we stop right then? You don't think so? See, that'd be a good one. There's contact. The goalkeeper contacts the guy. If, if the goalkeeper contacts the guy, and you blow your quick whistle, and the shot goes in the goal, now what do you do? And if, and if you try and give the goal, and the whistle went first, you're screwed. Players will get you on that. So this is where you can give it a little bit of a second or two, but in so doing, the question is, now do you create yourself, well, the guy got a shot, now I'm not going to give him the second bite of the cherry and all that kind of stuff, versus it was a foul. It's now you begin to read. If we look at, did the goalkeeper do something? I love the game that it's gray like this. Yeah? And so you have different options and what makes it work for your game. Go ahead. Opening game in Kansas City. Good guys make mistakes. Just if I fall off this thing, who's going to catch? Um, right? What do you got? You got a PK? You got a PK for tripping? What's the visual that confirms it for you? The ball's direction. Excellent. Use the direction of the ball. Excellent. Absolutely correct. Use the force vector of the, of the contact on the ball. If the guy, ref, I got the ball. Well, then it should be going off in a different direction. Conceptually, it could go, he could get the ball, could hit off the other guy's leg, and then go in a different, I get it. But usually, if the ball is going toward the goal line, toward the corner flag, and that challenge, then you might get to say, and I understand that we create our own, our own mess about, I got the ball first. That's what they always say. And then they take the guy out. And we had some memos in that regard, right? Where you can still get into props. OK, go ahead. Except for this, this is too bad to give you the answer here. Watch the play. So the defender is the guy that pushes the kid from behind into his own goalkeeper. And if they don't give you the school book solution there, what should it be? Direct free kick. It's outside the area. Okay, any misconduct? You give a yellow. No denying goal scoring opportunity? You have two choices to give more than the yellow. If you give a yellow, you're saying it's tactical or severe enough in nature that it's reckless, correct? Does anybody get tactical in nature that it's denying goal scoring opportunity? Or does anybody have, it's not reckless, it's now excessive force? And again, those are discrimination factors to play in versus versus I can get by with the yellow. How long do we take to process that? Milliseconds, right? And what's the message that you're reading that the kids are giving you? If the kid bounces right back up, versus if his knee is going off at the 90 degree angle or ankle and so forth. So again, quickness of, of your decision making and over committing to the visuals that you send Learn to use that one to two seconds to allow you to either check with your partners or if you're listening to your gizmos and, that, and you, you've got a skill set with that, which is a different skill set, okay, or if you're just doing a visual of what they're sending you from the players. But that, and it can't take too long because what's happening in that interval? You're hearing audio stuff from the team, ref who's making the decision, and so you want to be decisive as well. So learn to use that two seconds. Go ahead. They're caught out. Here's Edgar Lugo. Aldrete has acres of space. Okay. Adrian Aldrete. It's spilled by Sullivan. So now, this is for our AR perspective. What do you got? Come on, ref, what's the call? You got no go. Uh, yeah. Here, wait a second. Let me check my iPod. Break this down. 
Do we have a player in an offside position? Yes. Is he interfering with play? Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me now break it down. Teach me the law. For you, define interfering with play. Touching the ball. While the ball is in play? That helps. Being, uh, being close enough to another player to alter behavior. I'll come back to that. Playing the ball, playing the defender, obstructing goalkeeper view. Those are three that are easy to say interference with play. So if the ball is over the goal line, when the attacking player who was in the offside position touches the ball, what do you got? I got a goal. Why? Because he didn't interfere. The ball was out of play when it crosses the goal line. Right? If he touches the ball on the goal line, obviously then it would be interfering with play, and he would probably get the Dungeon Award. <laughs> yeah? From his players. But, but when you, when you, if you have to make that call, where are you making that call? You better not be at the halfway line. If your AR is up at the edge of the 18, hold still. So, so now here's a deal of recognizing What's the significance of what you're going to do and how, I come back to this term of selling it. Selling it doesn't occur in the book, but you need to be decisive here. So if in fact you're going to give this goal and you in fact do a whistle and you go running and say, hey, that ball is over the goal line, I'm going up with a goal. And now you run up field. Run away because they'll be chasing you. <laughs> or if you go whistle, no goal, you touch the ball, it's a free kick coming out at the edge, of, and now you run away because they're going to be chasing you. <laughs> You're going to get caught no what, no matter what you do here. But this is a good one to discuss real world involvement in play. Right? Player in an offside position, not interfering with play. Or interfering with play however you see it. And all of the goal line technology will do squat for the referee helping that. Go ahead. Oh, good. Stop. So, we're we talking about kicks from the penalty mark. All right? You've got your tournament semifinal match. You're in the fifth round. And this guy's got to equalize in order for it to go to the next round of kickers, okay? When was the last time you did kick from the penalty mark? Sunday. Good. Before that. Okay, go ahead, now play. I don't know where I get this shit. People send me stuff. I, you know. <laughs> what do you do? It's a go. It's a go. What can't you do? What shouldn't you do? Don't go run and pick up the ball. Don't tell the goalkeeper to get the ball. Don't, I mean, right? Don't interfere with that. That's, I mean... Look at that bouncing and so forth and so on. And what was the ultimate moment for the team? They don't know. They're not into that. You're going to have to go and equate, you're going to have to go and explain that law to them and explain to them why we need to go to the next round, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? But here's, it ain't over till it's over. That's a great, that's a great clip. Go ahead. So here's a player that's sent off for the injury. You called the trainer. <clears throat> They've done whatever. Player's got to go to the sideline. Can't come on until the ball's put in play. Just throw a little hair gel on your hair and go stand on <laughs> Going to let him take the throw in. And at issue here is attention to detail. We've had these kind of circumstances happen more than once. And here it just points out to who's right on this. I don't care. 
somebody on the team's got to get this. Throw a rock at the ref, do something on your, on your audio talk, wave your flag, go running down there, create something. You, you shouldn't let this play restart. Why? That's protestable if that ball ends up in the goal. Right? Guy throws, does a, I mean, obviously not directly from the throw-in, but does a throw-in head ball goal. What do you got? Ref, look at this, pop, pop, pop. So attention to detail on something simple. Go ahead. Up. And a nice, piece of, a nice piece of work with one of the newest ARs at the MLS. This guy just got bumped up. This is the guy, Kerry, that has got the other piece to what you're supposed to do in Dallas. Um, so a young kid, right, that right away gets enough of a visual, lucky that it's close enough. They talk about that green zone that's right close to them. Steps on the field, just enough for the ref to get there and diffuse it. We think that's a nice piece of teamwork. Yeah, a little bit of oomph, and we can get into what, how much more you see. The question is, what's the restart? Probably a free kick. Yeah? For whom? I don't know. I didn't see who he called the foul on. This is a youth game. No call. No call. No call. All right? So where did this happen on the field? Do you use the term coffin corner? Do you referee differently in the coffin corner than you do at midfield? Right? So, and, and the ref is right there. The ref is, is reasonably positioned and is probably trying to control that with voice. And we suggest to you that when dynamic play is happening, the more skilled players, they don't want to hear your voice. You got to blow your whistle? Blow your whistle. Pro players, if you try and talk them out of that, they'll tell you to. Do something, um, <laughs> right? Or blow your whistle. And you've got a couple of opportunities there that are optional, where the trailing players got them on the shoulder, got them a little with a bump from behind. The referee says, optional, nah. Optional, nah. Now, is this optional? And now you get into a thing. You tell me, where is that on your misconduct scale? And that's a cock and a pop. Now it goes into the, into the mid-body region, not above the neck. So you maybe get a little wiggle room. For me, I might go in there and chew his butt, give a hard yellow, let him know, hey man, hey, I hear you. I hear you, but you can't do that, man. You're on the edge with that, and get the heck out of there. Ideally, you blow the whistle beforehand. You know, if you, when, we're, when we're analyzing sequential uh, sequences, you know, this is essential. It's time to stop sequential sequences. Um, when, we're, when we're identifying sequential no calls that lead to something, you always could have done something sooner. We get it. The trick is anticipating when do those plays pay players off. A guy that's going nowhere to the touchline, being harassed, he wants that free kick. That's a set play for that, whatever they are, 15, 16. Go ahead. Another youth game. Another youth game. And oh, I'm sorry, this was the this was I'm sorry, this was the, 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 the turkey. So this is, I'm sorry, not a youth game. This is Stoika. And this is Stoika. And again, here's a shoulder to shoulder with a little bit more oomph. Right? Enough for a card? Nah. Why? Because he doesn't come in with that. It's sort of the afterthought. But you get the shoulder with the push off. So again, subtle 17 year olds, but again, international who are pros. Go ahead. Good piece of refereeing. Foul, not overreaction, quiet talk, dissipate. Message. Good. So here's the nature of the challenge. Look at the ref's body language. Didn't upset, but he did call the foul. The guy got hit where it hurts. Straight on. Now, what do you got in your game? Real, for this is a for real. This is a for real. The nature of that challenge in your under 14 semifinal. 
Anybody with misconduct? Sing them up. Be proud of it. Which one? Yellow? Keep it up. Red? Not half and half. So that's a good discussion. That's a good discussion. For the ones that would have red, why? The ones that would have yellow, what's the difference? And the little bit of the oomph at the end, you see that little twist? That might make it. The question is, do you allow a frontal stud challenge into the groin area? Is that part of your normal play? <laughs> well, that's what you're, wait a minute. You're saying that can happen how many times during the game? No, not once. You said a yellow card. There's another 21 players. Hello? Theoretically, you could have that happen a whole bunch of times before it was repeated. Your yellow card says, that's OK. That's not intolerable versus whatever. So I, I suggest to you that's getting close. Go ahead. And it's just a girls game. What's in your, what's in your game report? <laughs> this is a for real. Um, I'll just say that it's player number six. I don't have a clue what her number is. Player number two. Is it two or 12? Two. two. Player number two in the 47th minute was shown the red card for violent conduct. I need more. With excessive force, while the opponent was defenseless on the ground, took a swinging kick and kicked her in the head on a gale force wind of 12 on 10, whatever. <laughs> That's going to have more than the player was sent off for violent conduct. Why? That's going to be a multi-game suspension. And most leagues don't differentiate between the severity of those kinds of infractions. You'd be buying beer if we were someplace, whoever's phone's going on. Um, OK, go ahead. Got a couple more. <clears throat> Here's the ref doing the thing. That's the visual setup with the persistent infringement that it's already to the third. So conceptually, there's that sequence. And we say the third it might be the fourth if there's time. You've got, to, you've got to get the concept of the timeline in there. There's always a good question. What about players that commit infractions with advantage? Do those count toward persistent infringement? Maybe. Yeah. And, I, and, and we, we, we've got to actually tape of that someplace. I don't have it here. But play on, I'm coming back for you, is a good skill. Right? And you come in, when you say and you're committed to you're coming back for the play, doesn't mean you're committed to the car, to the card. Maybe you're just coming back to have a word. You could be coming back and say, hey man, don't be doing that again. Or you come back with the yellow card or whatever. The other thing that it does is it gets you to identify it's that player. I'm coming back for you 12, I'm coming back for you if you know the kids, whatever, 12. Go ahead. <laughs> I can remember watching back when I used to coach kids when it was heard to the left. Heard to the left, heard to the right. Watch. <laughs> Who's going to tell these kids they can't do that? Have you had young kids sent off and shown the red card for spitting? They spit. That's a social, at that age group, you have to teach them that they can't do that. Or you have to teach them that they can't do this. Or whatever. I can still remember a guy set off little girl with the ponytail for denying a goal scoring opportunity. Which, and, and the parents, come on, ref, we're trying to develop the game. And the ref's line was, no, you're not. The game is developed. 
coach, you're supposed to teach her that she can't do that. Okay, so we're about hit our limit, don't we think? We're supposed to. So the concept of what this is supposed to be, a couple of skill sets, hopefully, that we piqued your interest, um, good, good connection with everybody during the course of the event, and eye contact and participation and people participating. The idea of this is to make you guys better for whatever you're going to do tonight or tomorrow or your next game at whatever level that you do. Thank you for what you do to the game. Recognize that you are out there as beacons for the kids that are watching, that you're working with. Pass this stuff along. Continue with what you're doing. Go have fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs>